I don't know what's happened over the last maybe six months or a year, but maybe you're like me and you've noticed that everywhere you look, whether it's like tech blogs, Android websites, everyone seems to be talking about something called network attached storage. This is abbreviated most commonly to NAS, N-A-S. Now, this is something that I never had like a ton of interest in until somewhat recently, and it coincided perfectly with Ugreen reaching out to me and asking if I wanted to review a sort of more budget-oriented NAS that they were launching, the DH2300. It's going to be right around $200 launching on October the 20th. I should be posting this video probably on October the 20th, unless, of course, that's on a weekend. That's a Monday. Yeah, October 20th, you're probably seeing this video. I'm also going to have a coupon code down below to bring that price down under $200. I think that makes this a pretty darn good deal, as we'll talk about in this review why that is. Of course, basically, what is a NAS? If you don't know, I'm going to kind of treat this as or have the perspective of someone who, like me coming into this, really did not know much about these things and only had a sort of cursory knowledge. So what is a NAS? Think of it like your own personal cloud storage, your own personal Google Drive, OneDrive, Apple, iCloud, whatever it might be, but it's more than just that. It can also be, and this is the way I'm using it most, it can also be your own private Netflix, Hulu, Disney+, Plus, whatever you want to say. It's your own private streaming television and movie service, and it is pretty darn good. So guys, the DH2300 is this sort of silver gray monolith, and the way that this works is there's a top to it that pops off, and you install a couple of hard drives. It has two bays for two different hard drives. Now, Ugreen did send along with this two four terabyte hard drives, so I have a total of eight terabytes worth of space. It's very, very easy to install these inside these little racks and drop them into their two individual bays. And from there, there's a power cable with a barrel port. There is a an Ethernet port. You're going to plug it in to have internet access. And from there, hit that power button and you're pretty much off and running. And managing this thing is surprisingly, surprisingly simple. I was very, very happy to find there's this little NFC logo on the front of the NAS and you can just tap your phone to the front of it and it's going to pull up the store to go download their application. That's such a smart touch. Once it's installed, you have so much that you can do right here from your phone. You can see your system, hardware, temperature, resources, but then you have all of these little apps that you can install, like a vault or a theater, all of these different really, really potentially useful things. So let's start off just by talking about photos, because I think that that is sort of a good way to get your head in the right space with what this thing is for and how people might use it. I use Google Photos. I have a ton of photos and videos backed up in Google's cloud. Maybe you want to do this locally and you don't want Google to have your photos. Well, there is a photos application. And you can see my photos here. We can go into tools and we can actually turn on photos backup. So what this is going to do, just like Google Photos, I take a shot and it's going to immediately upload it to this NAS for me in the background. Don't even have to think about it. And then from there, I can click on these photos and I can view them. Now, they don't have like a fully featured like editor like you would have in something like Google Photos. But if your main concern is keeping your photos and videos secure, backed up and local, they're private. I think this is a really, really cool way to go. I actually downloaded all of my Google Photos stuff and uploaded onto this DH2300 and it handled it just fine. There is even the ability to do some sort of like some, some proper like real searching through your photos. You can see if I search for Shane, it has recognized my face automatically. So if I click on this, it's going to pull up photos that have my face in them. Now, this is not as strong or powerful as Google Photos. Like, I can't really search dogs and see that. It's trying its best, but it doesn't really work quite as well as that. There is some object recognition, but it just animal. All animals are kind of put into their own category. You have a map that will show you where your photos and videos were taken. Again, it's good at what it's good at. This is not, I don't think, a full Google Photos replacement for the editing and the proper like search ability with this sort of thing, but there is enough here for, I think, a lot of people. Something that I love about this thing, though, is how you can manage this from your computer. 
This is my Ugreen NAS. There is an application you can install from Ugreen and it will allow you to do a lot of really, really cool things. But one thing that it'll let you do is see this sort of desktop interface. If I want to move files around on my NAS, I can just go into a little file explorer and do what I need to do. I can literally grab a file off my computer on one monitor or just sort of, you can make this smaller. Like if I wanted to move this video file over, I could just drag it into my NAS and it will just start uploading it directly to it. How cool is that? So you're putting files on this thing. Great. What else can it actually do? So you've seen the photos thing. That's cool. What about sync and backup? So you can use this thing, one, to sync a particular folder. So you can have a folder on your NAS and a folder on your computer and it's going to keep them one to one matching. What about backup and restore? You can have this thing backing up your computer. So if you have some sort of big data loss, guess what? You don't because it was all backed up to your NAS and it's going to do this automatically. You can go through and set different parameters, different folders, whatever it is you need to do. You've even got a vault option where you can have things sort of on your NAS that will be password protected. So those are even more safe and secure than everything else. If we jump into the control panel, you can see you can have multiple different users who can each have their own folders and sections of this device. I like that you can change things like the LED indicators. You can actually just turn those off if maybe they're too bright. You can change your fan settings to make it run even faster. I found that default is absolutely fine, but this is like, it's a proper little computer, all right? Like you have these widgets up here as well that you can see the CPU load, the memory, how much of your storage is being used. It, it really is. This is kind of how I'm thinking about it. You've seen me review these little mini PCs. It's a mini PC who's wearing a top hat made of storage. Now, it also is running an ARM processor. It's a rocket ship processor. At first, I was like, they use those in these like retro gaming handhelds. How powerful is this going to be? This processor is going to need to move files back and forth, you know, potentially over a network. It's going to need to encode video files. Is this little ARM rock chip going to be able to hold up? The answer is absolutely. This thing has not hitched. It has not stuttered. I can't tell you how often I would fire up Hulu and it would just be glitched out. It would be doing really weird things like it would be talking to me and just like, reading the things on screen. Netflix tends to freeze on me. Still, it's a little bit better these days, but they're for a while freezing all the time. This just runs beautifully, perfectly. I have had literally not the first problem with this thing running. And like I told you, the main thing I'm using it for is streaming video. So let's talk about that for a second. There is an application that you're going to see here. I actually need to reinstall it because I got rid of it. I'll explain that here in just a minute, but it's called theater. And what you do with this is you create a library. So I'm going to call it movies. I'm going to point it towards a folder. And this is going to kind of tell you why I'm not using it. I'm using something called Plex instead, but let's point it at the movies folder. We're going to say that that's totally fine. And what it's going to do is it's going to scan that folder and it's going to just start grabbing my movies and placing them in this folder. And what's amazing about this is there is an Android TV application that looks basically just like this. You install this on your television and you are able to go in and see your movies and you're able to click on them and play them. It's going to stream it from this NAS over to your television. Now, I did run into some sort of strange problems with this. When I added my TV shows, you can see that it's trying to sort of do some really cool stuff, like give you the cast and artwork. It's trying to match up this piece of media with some information. When I added my TV shows, it got a lot of stuff very, very wrong. There was a particular like uh, behind the scenes sort of thing from a Bob's Burgers movie, and it thought that it was let's just say adult content. When you clicked on it and played it, it was the thing from Bob's Burgers, but that's not what it thought it was. So a little bit of some strangeness going on there. For most people though, I think that just the built-in theater app is gonna be fine. I think that the Photos app, the backup app, all this stuff works exactly like you would think and it performs quite well. Now I do use something called Plex. It's basically this thing, but I think just a little bit better, a little bit more feature rich, and it didn't have the same issues with some of my shows being incorrectly labeled. So I went through the process of getting Plex up and running. It's a little bit more complicated. I'm going to put a link in the description to the video tutorial that I followed. Just do exactly what they say 
and you can do it too. It's not that bad. You just have to follow instructions. But with Plex up and running, this thing is absolutely fantastic. I have Plex installed on all of my televisions and on my uh, my personal devices, and I can stream stuff straight from it, and it is quick. It looks good. It's just great. I have no need for several streaming services. In fact, I've canceled several several of them. Disney Plus, Hulu, I've canceled quite a few streaming services to reduce my monthly payment for these things because I don't need them anymore. Now, one thing that I'm sure a lot of you are asking, where do I get the media that I'm streaming? And the answer is, you have to just figure out how to get that yourself. Maybe you're going to buy a DVD Blu-ray drive that you can rip things from, and you're going to go on eBay and buy DVDs and Blu-rays and rip them and put them on there. You have to find your own way to get this stuff. I have a pretty decent collection of my own media, and so I just threw it over there, over the network, which was surprisingly fast. And that's what I've been doing. Now, keep in mind that somewhat hidden cost, right? Like I said, coupon code down below should bring this thing down under $200, but you need to buy storage. So I've got a couple of four terabyte drives in there. You're looking at $80, $90 for a decent four terabyte drive. There's one for 70. And you might want to look for ones that are meant for a NAS. They're ones that are, I think that they're literally meant to be like accessed constantly. They're meant to kind of handle that load. I think this is the one that they sent me actually. So that's a pretty, you know, that's, that's not $400 if you go for that. So that is a little bit of a hidden cost. Now, maybe you're like me and you had some old hard drives laying around and you're willing to sort of take that risk and just use those old drives. That's up to you. You know, you got to kind of decide what you want to do with that. I wish that they had a listing for this up so I could show you the listing, but they don't. I'm filming this before this thing has been actually released. So it is what it is. But for me, as a NAS newbie, this thing has been very, very easy to use. I think that that interface that they give you with, you know, basically just being like a little Linux distribution. It's all just so straightforward, you know, like you've got notifications, you've got a universal search, you can see the tasks that have occurred, you can see the status of your system, you've got a file browser, you can just drag and drop things. All of this just seems so straightforward to me. Even setting up the theater application is really, really simple. Like if I'm going to add my TV shows, we're just going to do a new library. We're going to call it TV. We're going to point it at the folder that I put my TV shows in, which would be right there. I'm going to click on confirm and it's just going to take care of it from there. You might want to look into this data source, the movie database, and maybe maybe there's a way to like import a better movie database. Look how simple this is. Like it's not done yet. Like it hasn't finished scanning everything, but look how well this works. It's really, really easy and really straightforward. To me, if you're looking at getting into this sort of thing, you're looking at maybe cutting some streaming services, you're looking at backing up your photos, you're just backing up files, backing up your computer, something like this works extremely well. I have been so impressed with how 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 easy this thing is to use and how well it's working. And I, I don't now, looking back, I don't know why I didn't do this sooner. I, I really just enjoy using Plex and Stream. Just get the stuff you watch. Like, why am I paying Hulu, whatever it is, $20 a month to watch two shows that are on Hulu? Just get those shows and put them on a NAS and don't pay anybody anymore. You just have them. It doesn't make sense to do it any other way to me. I think that this... I think it's very, very cool. I do want to say thanks to you, Green, for sending this product as well as the hard drives over for me. As with all of my reviews, I'm not being paid monetarily. That's all they did. They sent me the product and they are seeing the review at the exact same time as everyone else is. This is just my honest evaluation. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Have you already bought an ass? Are you looking at buying something like this? How does this one seem? To you, drop that comment, like I said, down below. If you do want to purchase this thing, there will be an affiliate link down below. Now, if you click that link and you make a purchase, I will earn commission. It's a great free way to help support the channel. So guys, I'll see you in the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.